What's up everyone, Darkwing Dad here. I uh, hope you enjoyed that little rendition of Anakin. Best thing you're gonna get from me, minus the charming good looks and the flowing hair. It's the best I got, I think I make an okay Sith. Anyways, uh, we're here for part two, the official part two of the Vader build. Uh, I know there are some snippets uh, on my channel um, that kind of show where it's at. So there's a little you know, sneak peek there if you haven't seen them. Uh, but more importantly, they cover how I got the helmet to look the way I got it, basically. You know, we cover PLA welding, uh, proper fillers, and then obviously there was that uh, intricate detail sanding video where I guess I talked way too much. So I'm going to try to talk less in this video. But basically this video is going to let you guys know how I got the helmet the way I got it. I'm going to try to tone it down a little bit, not talk as much like I'm doing now, but still give you um, informative information. I try to do things a lot different on my channel and actually give you factual information versus just showing quick snippets like do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. I try to explain how and why the process works. So I'm going to do that in this video as well just to let you guys know where I'm at. Uh, I'm also going to give you um, just some feedback of trials and tribulations. I tried some different uh, techniques here, uh, more specifically with resin, so I will give you some tips on that. But ultimately, this video is going to cover my whole sanding uh, procedure, how I went about getting the Vader helmet so smooth, some of the products and techniques I used. So without any further ado, let's go. So how we got to where we got. So if you've watched PLA welding part one, part two, I explain how I had to weld multiple pieces of the Vader dome together because initially it was just too big to print on my print bed. So we went ahead and welded everything together. And in those videos, I explained how to do PLA welding, how to knock some of the welds down, how to fill them in with proper fillers and use other fillers throughout it, things like Bondo body filler and glazing putty. And we're going to use all those products in the remainder of the helmet as well. Uh, but basically in those videos, I specifically touch on how to fill in those weld marks and everything uh, but the process doesn't change so after the dome was all filled in and everything was prepped I went and I did a sand with basically 160 or 180 whichever you want to start with and then 220. Um, you can use a machine and you'll see in the video that I do use a machine for the glazing putty however um, you want to use a nice little interface pad something soft and spongy in between that machine um, and you want to definitely use a lighter grid so you would never want to use you know 120 or even 160 on a machine because you're just going to generate a lot of heat and you're using a flat sander on a curved surface so you're just going to end up gouging it up generating a lot of heat and kind of messing it up so a lot of this was done by hand uh, when it got to the glazing putty status i did use a machine which i'll show you but basically after i did my whole process um, i did glazing putty on the entire dome and then prepped it for its second stage of sanding so here's a visual for my method in um, smoothing out 3D prints and specifically what I used in uh, in this build here. So uh, the only place that is optional is number four. That's why it has an asterisk. Uh, it all is dependent on how smooth you get it. Um, you can either go to glazing putty or jump into filler primer. But essentially, if you follow these steps, and that's what I did in this video, you will get your prints buttery smooth. All right, so after thoroughly uh, sanding the Vader dome with a 160 and 220, it was time to apply glazing and putty. So I put a nice coat on, uh, let it sit for about an hour, and got right into sanding it down. Uh, now, I did use a machine uh, for the most part on the dome. Uh, however, I did put like a nice thick spongy interface in between the flat part of the sander um, just to allow it to bend and move to the contour. So whenever you're using something uh, curved, you want to make sure you have something squishy in between to kind of bend to the curvature of the piece. But I used 220, just went real slow, uh, definitely sped up the process. And when it was all done, it looked a little something like this. All right, so here is the Vader Dome. Um, but I went ahead and sanded as much as I could with the palm sander uh, with 220 and then all these little intricate areas here. Uh, I went over with my wallet and uh, 220 grit sandpaper and then a lot of it I actually just used the, uh, the contours of my hand. There's a couple spots here 
where I got it hit up yet. But basically, this is when you when you use glazing putty, this is pretty much um, how you want it to look. Now, there's a couple spots that are a little bit heavy here that I'm going to knock down. Um, but you really don't need to go beyond 220 with glazing putty because you don't want this surface too smooth. You want the primer to grab onto something here. So, um, you know, this is, this is basically where you want it at. You know, we did a heavy coat of the glazing putty, but all these, you know, you can see how it's filling in and that's what we want it to do. We, we don't want to go heavier. We don't want to go 180 or any lower because then we're just going to take off all the work that we just did. But some of these areas here where it's a little bit more built up, I'm just going to take the 220 and basically I'll just show you here. I'll try to do it left-handed. When you have these really faint areas, it's okay just to kind of do it by hand. Um, most of it's already been knocked off see by doing that and that's what we want we want it to fill in these lines we don't want big chunks so I'm gonna go through and kind of knock down um, all these areas here that there's bigger chunks and we just we want these lines filled in that's what we want that's what we want to look for so I'm gonna go through and just knock down these one more time and then we're basically moving on to the, uh, the filler primer so we're gonna be putting Bondo filler primer on there but overall uh, she's looking pretty good should be getting some primer on this piece here and it should be looking like one solid piece so just a couple touch-ups here and then we'll get some uh some primer laid on her all right here we go so i did about three coats of the uh bondo brand filler primer and went over it with 320 and 400 and knocked a lot of it down uh, a lot of this is just kind of like uneven sanding you can see how um, there's still some stuff here that needs to get sanded down, but uh, after a good 320 and 400 pass, uh, it's super, super smooth. Um, but uh, we still got some imperfections in here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat this process, is I'm going to do uh, just two coats of filler primer, and then I'm going to go through and hit it again with 320 and 400 because we want that filler primer to build up. We don't want to go too low and strip all of our hard work off. This is incredibly, incredibly smooth. It's really just little superficial things. Um, you can kind of see some of the stuff here. These are just very faint lines, and that'll all fill in with this next coat. So and you can actually see, even with the 320 and 400, I've taken some of it off. So we don't want to take it off all the way. So a lot of these lines here, this is all going to get filled in with this next coat. So we're going to repeat that process. Probably going to repeat this process twice. But what we'll do is we'll do two coats, 320, 400. See how it looks. Uh, probably do uh, one final coat and then do 400, 600. And then do etching primer. And this thing will be ready for paint. Um, it's close, but we just got to do a little bit more work. So uh, another coat, two more coats, and then two more rounds of sanding. We'll see how she looks. All right, so uh, here's the dome pretty much uh, ready to go. Uh, this was two more rounds after doing two to three coats of filler primer. Uh, sanded it with 320. I uh, did two to three more coats and then hit it with 400. Uh, again, I stress, you don't have to get super aggressive with this Bondo filler primer. You can even see how 400 grit is knocking down uh, some of those high spots. And that's what we want. We want them all leveled and uniform. So uh, what I did after this is basically wiped it down. Uh, I applied two more layers of the Bondo filler primer just to fill in any sanding marks. I then did etching primer. Um, I always like to do one or two coats of that. Lastly, you'll notice the helmet is black and that's because I did a primer sealer, which will help seal off any fillers or anything that might be possibly leaching through that will absorb paint and affect the uh, final coat of paint, which I always recommend using a primer sealer uh, whenever you use any sort of polyester fillers or resins or anything like that. All right, so here is the beginning process of uh, the Vader helmet here. So obviously I've taken all the pieces off and we're going to be using primarily resin uh, on this whole face area. Resin, when you apply it nice and light it just kind of settles and fills in okay so what i did with some of the areas is some of the areas where there was um overhang or that stringing i just went through and just kind of clipped off what i needed to because there's no sense in wasting time and sanding so i went through and clipped off any necessary things and then i basically took um 80 grit sandpaper and 180 grit sandpaper and just sanded the whole thing now on the side i did use a machine for a little bit 
um, and then everything else was just basically done by hand. And this is just to kind of speed up the process. Now, I really just sanded all of these main areas that you're gonna see when the, when the, the, the dome is on. And hopefully we can, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna go through very lightly and take some probably 220 or 320 and just, you know, go through all these little areas here just once or twice, very, very lightly. So there's still gonna be some sanding on these areas, but I don't wanna sand it just yet. Keep in mind, we are gonna put filler primer, paint, and clear coat. So that is, those are all layers of soluble content that is going to kind of fill in and, and take away from the definition. So we don't wanna sand it too much. Uh, but overall, I did a general scuff just to kind of speed up the process. Obviously, we can see where our PLA lines are. But what we're going to do now is get some gloves, get some SLA resin, uh, and start applying it to the mask. Um, one very important thing, um, when you're done uh, sanding, you always want to take a microfiber and some isopropyl alcohol. Just wipe the whole helmet down um, just to get any residual oils, dust, anything like that that may affect the resin from settling in. So I'm gonna go through and do a secondary wipe with this. I did a quick wipe, I'm gonna do a secondary wipe just to prep this before we start putting the resin on. All right, so uh, we're gonna start applying the resin and anytime you are working with any sort of epoxies or resins or really anything that has volatile content, uh, and solvents, so you want to use some proper protection. Eyewear, gloves, possible respirator, mask, things like that. So with SLA resin, um, you definitely want to wear, you know, all the above. Um, I'm not wearing a mask. It's, the, the fumes really aren't too bad. Um, this is a water washable resin, so it doesn't have quite as much stench to it, but what we want to do here is just kind of give it a little bit of a swish. I'm just going to pour a very small amount in the cap. Now I recommend whatever color your print is to do um, the resin in a different color so you can actually see that you're applying it. So that's really all we're going to need. And really, all I'm going to do is use this little foam sponge. You don't really need a ton. Um, we're going to do multiple coats and just like art class, you just kind of want to spread it out. So if it goes on thick in one area, just kind of spread it out. You don't want it super, super heavy. Um, I'm going to repeat this whole process at least twice where I apply this, I cure it, I wash it with IPA and warm water and then um, sand it and then, and then do this again. So this will be uh, repeated when you start getting it thick like that, that's too heavy. So just spread it out. You don't want to leave it like that. If you can actually see um, color variance, you don't want that. But I like these foam brushes just because um, they're cheap and uh, you won't get, uh, like the bristles won't break off. And what's funny about these is as long as this never come, like you could put this in a baggie and as long as this doesn't come in contact with UV light, it'll never cure. So you can just keep reusing it. So that's kind of cool. But the biggest thing is these are just nice and cheap and they just get in the crevices really good. Um, and they're pretty much readily available everywhere. Absorbency is the main thing too. If you get a bristle, you're going to be constantly dunking it in here with this. The foam holds it. So you can definitely get better, uh, better coverage area with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna continue putting this on the helmet. Uh, when it's all done, we'll take a look at it and we'll get it in the cure station. Pretty much it for the helmet. Now, what I will do is I'm not gonna go and cure this right away. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to let this sit for about 20 minutes. The reason behind that is there are some areas where I put it on heavy and I want gravity to kind of take control. So what I'll do is most likely what will happen at any place where it's put on too heavy, it's gonna run down and it's gonna build up. And I take another one of these, obviously not this one, that's new and dry, and I'm just gonna dab and clean up all the excess. So you can even see right here how some of that's running down. I'm gonna take a new dry one and just clean that up and just soak up that excess. Uh, that way it's easier for sanding and for cleanup. Um, this piece here, uh, this got pretty trashed just with that top piece. 
Uh, I did put it on pretty heavy on the top. So there's definitely gonna be a lot of excess I'm gonna have to clean up on the top, but that shouldn't be too bad, it should be okay. But little areas like on the side and some of these vents, um, I will have to go through and just kind of clean it up. Now, um, I didn't do anything in the channels on the side uh, on here because we have to put that piece on. You don't really wanna put a lot of stuff in here because if you make that too narrow, then those side breather pieces won't fit in. So I'm not really gonna mess with that at all. Breather pieces here, these are just duct tape in place. I'll take those off. Um, these I'm just gonna put resin right on and then just sand them once and then call it a day. So those won't be too bad. But I'm gonna let this sit for about 20 minutes and I'm gonna come through with my dry brush, clean up any excess, any runoff that may have occurred, get it cured, wash it with IPA, wash it with water, um, go through, do another sand and repeat this process. So um, we'll get this thing just kind of settled. We'll start it curing, get it washed and do another round of sanding. As stated, um, and some of this was just to the way it printed, there were some areas that it really didn't matter how much resin you put in, uh, it still needed some filler. So basically, uh, in some of these heavy overhang areas uh, where the supports were generated and things as such, uh, I went through and just used some plastic metal. It's my filler of choice, super durable, dries nice and quick. Uh, you can knock it down with some 80 grit sandpaper, it works awesome. Uh, there's a couple little gaps here had filled all that in fixed that up and Went through and, and tried to sand the rest of it as best as I can But I'm not really going to OCD the flat areas are are mint. They're they're pretty they're pretty good uh, Even some of these curve areas smoothed out very well. However um, Just gonna have to kind of combine a couple different techniques to really get this piece where I want because it, it's just a very intricate piece It's just got so many dips curves uh, slices angles and whatnot um, so what I did is just, just kind of went old school and just took a bunch of a sandpaper and, you know, quadruple folded it to get a nice kind of somewhat flat surface and was working in here with different grits, basically 120, 180, and 220, the whole helmet. I'm not super, super, super concerned about up here because I'm really hoping the, uh, the glazing putty kind of fills this in. So what I'm going to do with this here is go through, wipe this all down with some isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to throw some gloves on. Uh, get this whole thing glazed show you how that looks glaze it let it sit for about an hour um, and then hit it with 220 and I'll show you guys what it looks like when we're done so here's where we were uh, knocking down and sanding off the glazing putty and basically same rules apply uh, as I did for the Vader dome is just applied it and then waited an hour and sanded it down now the thing that I like about glazing putty so much is it just sands so much easier so in this build I did try resin and I'm not saying that SLA resin is bad however for this particular piece it being so detailed it just was not the filler for me uh, I feel like if I would have just done two rounds of glazing putty it actually would have been done a lot faster and a lot more efficient the downside to resin is when you get into these really intricate areas if you can't get sandpaper on them and scuff them uh, it actually creates kind of a smooth surface that can actually reject paint so it can be risky in certain applications um, no big deal though i just took a little bit of extra time sanded the resin and then put the glazing putty on and then just followed the same suit uh, just hit a majority of the areas up with 220 but the real fine areas that i'm getting here i hit with 320 again you don't need anything super super aggressive when dealing with glazing putty it levels off uh, makes it super smooth and you can see how it still fills and makes everything uniform in one piece. So uh, basically after I sanded the whole thing uh, with 220 and 320, uh, there's some final end shots right here. Uh, it was ready to uh, have a couple applications of uh, Bondo filler primer, uh, which did about two to three coats and it leveled everything off beautifully and made it look great and was pretty much prepped for final sanding.
And here's just a quick overview and breakdown of the uh, intricate sanding again. Uh, of course, the full uh, in-depth detail can be seen on the video uh, that I have posted. But basically what I did is went through and uh, fine sanded everything and all the nooks and crannies with 320 grit. Made sure it was uh, as clean as I could get it. Uh, applied two to three layers of filler primer. Sanded it again with 320. Uh, applied two to three coats again. And then final sanded it with 400. Uh, this basically just helped kind of bring out the definition. Get rid of some of the minor imperfections that were still floating around. And when all was said and done was really the cherry on top. And really kind of helped bring Vader all together. And uh, really prepped the helmet for a final primer seal and ready to for paint. So here is the uh, the neck piece, and let me get this ball <laughs> out of the video. But uh, this is the neck piece basically after hitting it with uh, 320 uh, and 400 and then doing a couple coats of the uh, Bondo filler primer. Uh, came out a lot better. Uh, like I said though, um, had I printed this at a finer layer height, probably around 0.16, it would have eliminated a lot of the finer sanding I had to do and it would have looked a lot better. But uh, overall, I am gonna repeat this process one more time just because I'm super OCD. Uh, there's still some minor lines and things in these crevices that I'm just gonna try to knock down. So I'm gonna hit this one more time with 400 grit and then do two more coats of filler primer and call it a day. Uh, this is a display piece, so I am not super, super concerned about um, how great it looks. Um, keep in mind too, again, I am gonna do a couple uh, layers of just gloss black and then a few layers of clear coat. So a lot of things will still get filled in by that just to a certain degree. But one more round of uh, intricate sanding on this, hit it with some filler primer, it should be good to go, but it turned out pretty good. So I'm gonna give one more round of sanding and uh, get some final primer on this and get it ready for paint. All right, so here's a little uh, before and after. Uh, here are the breathers that go on the side of uh, Vader's helmet there and uh, basically this is obviously the before this is the after so the before um, it wasn't a terrible print uh, 0.2 layer height does need some sanding but basically what I do is I start with uh, this um, 240 but it's a little bit grittier it's more like 200 um, but this is kind of spongy so really what I do I just kind of hold it and kind of go over the whole thing and it, it kind of contours to the uh to the breather so i'll hit that with this and then go over it with uh 3m 220 which is a little bit more accurate just kind of smooth it out uh and i'll hit it with some filler primer and then i'll basically just repeat that process um a couple times uh what i'll do though is i'll hit it with filler primer and then go at it with uh, 320 this was actually some of the sandpaper that i was using and what i'll do is just kind of hold it like that and then just kind of go over the whole thing front to back top to bottom um allowing that to kind of do its job now um, if you get crafty you can kind of hold it like this if i can hold this here just hold it like that and just go like that and it'll knock it down too so 180 followed up with 220 filler primer and then just go 320 and then just repeat the process so um, what you're doing is you're allowing the primer to to build up and leave you with something like this so this one was done with multiple steps you can see on this one how good that looks it's nice and filled in it's a couple minor lines i'm going to sand it one more time uh, on this inside piece here i'm not too worried because that piece is going to go up against the mass so i really want to just make sure that the outside and everything but really smooth looks really good um, so by allowing 
you know, that filler primer to build up, it's going to fill in all these areas. So uh, really 180, 220 to start. And then you want to just repeat that process. Just use 320, something really light. You don't want to strip the primer off. You want to allow that to build up uh, and then just smooth it out. So 320 and then my final sand will be with 400. So uh, I'm going to get cranking on this. That way we can make this look like that and get it put on Vader and get it painted. Well, that's it. That is it for the part two official uh, of the Vader build. I know there was a lot of information in there. Um, hopefully you guys found it useful. Obviously using some different products and some techniques of maybe that you're used to. Obviously it's a very detailed and very in-depth piece. Um, it is something that does have a, a wide variety of topics, which I tried to condense down. If you apply the methods that I used um, to any um, 3D print, you will get it looking, you know, very similar to this. As I stated in the video, um, use things like glazing putty, maybe use resin and, and slowly build that up. Uh, don't sit there and just sand the whole thing with, with 220 or 180 or whatever. It's important to get rid of the PLA lines as much as possible, uh, but you don't want to compromise the integrity of the print. Obviously, Vader had that nice, crisp cheek jawline area. Um, you sand too much, you start rounding things off. It's always better to kind of knock down as much as you can without compromising the overall form of the mask and allow those putties, those fillers, whatever polyester agents that you may have in what you're using to get rid of those PLA lines, you have to allow them to build up. You know, and, and then what you're doing is you're filling in those PLA lines. You're not compromising the integrity of the print. Uh, it's just slowly filling in and building uh, a layer that is going to smooth everything out. And obviously when you get to filler primer, you're gonna follow that same rule of thumb as I spoken in the video. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching the video. Uh, hopefully this one was helpful. Again, I try to change it up and do different approaches and do different techniques to share with you guys. This as stated was a very, very uh, in-depth build. Um, a lot of intricacy, just a lot of curves, a lot different than any Iron Man helmet that I've done. It is a massive piece. Um, you've got a lot more coming up. Obviously, part three is going to be a very in-depth video where I will show painting, clear coat application, wet sanding, buffing and polishing, re-clearing, all sorts of stuff. Uh, I'm also gonna be adding some uh, red LEDs to the inside of the Vader helmet because that's just what I do is put lights and everything. So uh, this is strictly going to be a display piece, but I think it is definitely gonna be awesome. I'll also show you my technique on how to make the um, lens eyes basically for the Vader helmet. A couple different options. So when you are building your Vader helmet, you can maybe use one of mine and do whichever one to your liking. That's it guys. Uh, like I said, thank you so much. If you are a subscriber to the channel, Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are so close to a thousand. When we get to a thousand, I'm gonna be giving stuff away. I'm hinting towards giving away a printer. Uh, it would be more of a intro printer, something around an Ender 3 or something like that. But I'm just kind of kicking around some ideas. So when we get to a thousand subs, which hopefully is within this week, I am going to be announcing my 1K sub giveaway. So if you are a subscriber, be on the lookout for that. If you're not a subscriber, please go ahead and click that subscribe button if you enjoy all things 3D printing, finishing, uh, electronics, maybe some goofy vids with my kids and Disney things and vacations we do and stuff like that. If you like any of that stuff, please click that subscribe button. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up. If you have a question on anything that I may have used in this video that wasn't covered properly, just leave me a comment. Uh, I always try to comment in a 
pretty quick response time. Uh, you can also drop me an email and email me with any questions you might have. Much it, guys. Thank you so much to all of my subscribers and viewers for watching this video. I greatly appreciate your feedback and your comments. So leave me one. Let me know what you thought of the video. Thumbs up, comments, subs, all that fun stuff is great. We're on the push to a thousand, so let's get there so we can do more fun stuff. Until the next video, guys, I'm Darkwing Dad, and I'm out. We'll see you next time. Later.